With AI-generated videos becoming this good, aside from not being able to tell what is real and what is not anymore, another major threat we all have to face is that you can now get Rickrolled in an unimaginable way. Like, you think that's an Eiffel Tower? Nah, you're getting Rickrolled. Oh, you think those are clouds? Oh, guess what's below it? You're getting Rickrolled. You think this is the distracted boyfriend meme? Nah, he's actually the Rickroll. Right now, you can pretty much make the most absurd things in the world, like connecting memes back to back or while looking cursed, but somewhat reasonable. It's like that crayon.ai era all over again with the most uncanny AI generated images, but instead now, it's time travelers stopping famous videos from happening. For those who are not really in the AI tech bubble and wonder why this is new or exciting and just watch that Drew Gooden video, well, you're not too wrong about that, but just let me give you a quick rundown on what's different and what's new this time. Back in February 2024, Sora from OpenAI was announced with one of the most jaw-dropping pure text-to-video generators we have seen to this day. What I mean by pure is that the AI can generate videos from only text. There have been other various AI video generators, but those are either not as impressive or fundamentally work on a different level. Like these ones need a reference video underneath, and in some cases, it's called video-to-video -video generation. The the difference between the two is kind of like watching a kid learning how to draw from scratch versus them showing you some artworks they have traced. So the former is definitely more impressive, but the latter would still provide consistency that pure generators cannot achieve. Like if we can map out the 3D environment first, then run a Blender camera to film it from a 2D angle and use AI to sync up these perspectives, while it may not be pure text to video anymore, this method does provide a more consistent world compared to any other pure text to video generators. The only thing that is stopping you from I'm doing that right now is a developed toolkit to let you easily do that. Which brings us to today's sponsor, Storyteller.ai. They have developed a ready-to-use toolkit that lets you do exactly what I just described easily, with editing timelines, 3D sandbox, and built-in generators. From the developers of FakeU.com, Storyteller is a generative video tool for creatives that want precise control over their video outputs. It's inspired by both physical filmmaking as well as game engine Machinima. You can kind of think of Storyteller as Figma or Canva for video creation, and its creator in the loop system lets you build sets, populate them with actors, and provide you with precise control of all the action and animation. For the 3D environment, you can easily build a reusable one yourself or pick a preset from the featured stages, with you being able to fully customize your sets by adding props from the menu or import your own 3D assets, animations, audio, and even characters. Each character can be given some animations, and you can even use motion capture to precisely control your character's body and facial movements. But if that's too much of a hassle, you can direct your cast to walk, dance, fight, and so much more. Then when you're ready to generate your video, you can choose from a variety of artistic styles ranging from realism to anime. And once your video is complete, you can come back and edit it again in the 3D editor at any time, similar to the concept of a reshoot, but in a completely different manner. And if you encounter any problems or want to share your ideas or results, definitely join their Discord community where other passionate creators are also playing with this new tool. They are currently in a closed beta and normally require signing up for the waitlist, but if you join right now, you can get access as part of an early sneak peek. Check out Storyteller.ai now using the link down in the description, and thank you Storyteller.ai for sponsoring this video. You can also learn more about the difference between AI-generated videos in this old video of mine. So in the last few weeks, a few pure AI video generators were announced one after another, probably thanks to the fear of missing out, which is a pretty common occurrence in the AI commercial and research space as they are trying to outshine the others or being fearful of becoming obsolete. Some people do say these new AI generators have come close to the quality or even surpassed what Sora could do, but I think that's also up for debate as we don't know if the results shared by OpenAI are representative of what Sora can actually generate in the first place. As we have learned a few months later after Sora was announced, some newer and cooler demos were actually post-processed and edited. While it is obvious that they want to impress the Hollywood folks, but that's definitely a question of move there. About that, the first ever AI commercial was made by Toysaurus, which is pretty neat I guess. They might have used the Sora, but who knows, and with Sora's release date still being completely unknown, it only took other companies 4 months to figure out how to use the new model architecture called Diffusion Transformers that made Sora so good. I've also mentioned in my older video where the AI architecture called Diffusion Transformers that made all these improvements is not exactly new. While most researchers a year ago knew this architecture is the next big thing, it was still only proven useful after OpenAI Sora and Stable Diffusion 3 were trained based on the variants of it. So they are basically the successful lab rats that might have cost tens 
of million dollars. Anyways, this recent AI video boom was all started thanks to the release of Kling, published by a Chinese social media company called Kuaiso, which is similar to TikTok. And the demo previews they provide were just really good, especially for the close-up shots on the body movements, like when they are riding a bike, riding a horse, eating, 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 and eating. Wow, that's a lot of eating going on. In general, the AI generator's capabilities are highly dependent on what it was trained on. Chinese mukbangs. That's all there is. Okay, joke aside, like it can generate Chinese girls pretty consistently and have people holding chopsticks without some crazy deforming. Can any other models do that? Probably not. But what is even crazier is that they let people use it completely for free. It's just that it's only available through its mobile app. It's all Chinese and it's a bit complicated to sign up. You can refer to Theoretical Tim's video to learn how to sign up if you want to try it. Never mind, web app is available now at the time of editing. On the other hand, the biggest downsides of this model is that that it is Chinese based, so if you do want to use it, you probably have to pair yourself up with ChatGPT when prompting the model. This is not foolproof either, as some sentiment will still be lost in translation. On the flip side, though, Kling is able to generate up to 2 minutes at 30 FPS, extend videos up to 3 minutes, and lets you choose an initial input image. I'm not sure if all these functions are available for everyone. These info are probably just them sharing what their model can do, but the initial input image should be available. Next up, we have Luma's Dream. Machine, which was released five days after Kling. This was another big but pleasant surprise too, as Luma Labs was previously known for their Nerf and 3D Gaussian applications where you can convert a series of 2D images and reconstruct a 3D environment out of it. And to see they have been cooking a text to video model is definitely something I didn't see coming. The quality of their previews looks around the same level as Kling, but definitely have a different vibe to it. You can roughly guess what the model is primarily trained on and should be good at based on what kind of demos they promote more. So from what Luma AI has posted on their social media, it feels like it has a more cinematic theme around its generations. From the color tone to the camera movements, it feels less stock video looking and doesn't have the TikTok vibes to it. It can even do some pretty cute animations too, or in the style of anime. But how the community uses it has been drastically different from what they intended to make. Like later on when they introduced the keyframe function, which is essentially being able to pick the starting and the ending frame of a generated video, things start to get wild. You get time travelers stopping vines from happening and memes being connected to each other. This is also how I made the video intro and the internet is definitely rediscovering the era of crayon.ai once again thanks to Luma. However, for its free tier generations, you are only limited to 3 per day and 30 per month with video length of up to 5 seconds. The queue is pretty long too. So you have to wait a pretty long time for your generation to process but the actual generation itself probably only takes a few minutes. For me, I had to wait around 15 to 20 hours to get two of them done. I don't know how exactly long it took because I went to sleep. So my friend helped me out. Shout out to Quay, the most cracked 3D researcher I know. You can check out his video if you want to learn Nerf or 3D Gaussian implementations down to the nook and cranny, like implementing them in CUDA. While it is in Chinese, there's still English subtitles too if you really do want to learn. Anyways, if you do want to skip the queue, the price right now is currently sitting at uh 30 bucks a month which is pretty expensive. From that, you also get 150 generations, no watermark, and a commercial use license. There are other tiers too, with the main difference just being having more generations per month, while the keyframe and the video extension function is available even for the free tier. And just as I thought, Runway AI was really going to stay there and take the L, six days after Luma's announcement, Runway announced a preview to their Gen 3 Alpha model. Then 10 days later, they opened the access to everyone, of course with a catch, you had to pay 15 bucks a month to even try it. This time, however, Gen 3 Alpha is coming in strong, with one of the strongest clarity and consistency out of the other few, with a lot of POV or drone flying cinematic footage. From showing bird POV to ant POV, I think they want to demonstrate their strong generalization capabilities on the realism aspect. The movements of the animals are not as awkward either. Apart from that, the close-up shots for the human faces are by far the most realistic ones, with the skin and the eyes being the most realistic out of the other two. It 
it kind of does work with animations and anime. Realistic fantasy content looks pretty good too, I guess. Or does that count as horror? However, Gen 3 Alpha currently doesn't have the function where you can choose a starting frame, but it might be a matter of time as previous gen all have this function, and they have also promised more structural and motion control that will be added further down the line. But with the current 15 bucks, you only get 62 seconds of generation every month. If you do some quick math, that's basically 3 times more expensive than Luma AI. But there is also a native upscale function which is pretty neat. But if you don't want to pay and sign up for a random account, you can alternatively look at OpenSora which is an open source implementation that aims to replicate Sora by OpenAI. They also release a new version 1.2 on June 17th. Open source models like this usually have a better description of its model and documentation on how it's trained, so more specific details like it can generate 720 times 1280 up to 4 seconds will be shared too. So if you really want to learn how exactly text to video work, definitely check out their GitHub and just look at how long the prompts they use. Maybe that's the new standard for a well-made prompt to generate something reasonable looking. But anyways, aside from the official demos released by all those companies, the custom generations people posted online speaks louder about the model qualities, unless the users are not prompting them well. But usually these companies would have something in the back to enhance the prompt you enter anyways. Image generation like Midjourney does this, and Luma AI also has this function too, which you can enable as you can see here. While it is pretty difficult to nitpick when they are all getting better and better, there are still general vibes that makes another feel better than the other. But somewhere down the line, the functionalities these companies offer might be the sole determining factor for a lot of people to choose between these tools. And as of right now, these models are roughly equally good and equally bad at the same time. They are all still terrible at anatomy, well, it's still expected as AI image generation still can't handle the anatomy well either. So when human bodies are flipping upside down, the model has no chance to make sense of that. It definitely is also a lack of data in that department, and synthetic data from 3D simulation might be the solution to this if generalization gets better. On the other hand, fine grain and complex world interactions are still out of the question. Things like generating handwriting and drawing out the letters correctly is impossible. Simulation might have a chance to save these, but it feels much harder than the previous problem. However, pouring liquid has definitely gotten better. So these AI video generators are still far from being world simulators, but creative-wise, it still has some pretty interesting touch it can provide. Like how this guy made this insane AI generated MV with a wide range of different tools, which let the current weird vibes AI generated videos have blended in perfectly. But for them to get even better in the realism aspect, or even become an actual simulator, video models probably need to achieve some decent reasoning capabilities too for it to generalize physics and learn from the videos within the training data. And if you want to keep up with the latest AI research, definitely check out my newsletter where I publish research breakdowns on many cool papers that I don't have time to make videos for. Thank you for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Lascellias, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Deegan, Alex Marie's, Migulim, Fafau, Robert Zaviasa, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.